Empire stock recap? Cool. I, I will start you here in just a second. Welcome, everyone. This is our Monster of the Week. It is February 1st. So for those of you who happen to stumble upon us while we're goofing off, uh, welcome. And for those of you who catch the recording, welcome as well. So we're going to begin. Uh, this is actually our fourth episode, I think. Um, I'm going to backfill some of the previous um, recorded sessions for you so you can catch those. Um, this is our first live uh, streaming as well on, on our Twitch channel. So we'll begin uh, tonight with our recap. Uh, that's going to be presented by Desmond. Go for it. Right. Yeah. So last time on We Really Need to Get Ourselves a Name, <laughs> that's right. we uh, confronted <clears throat> the Windigool in its cave lair, and it nearly killed Del. It took a little damage of, on its own, uh, and eventually uh, t attempted to escape. I used my psionic abilities to hold it in place for it to take a bit more damage uh, until it eventually uh, caused a cave in and forced me to redirect my focus. Unfortunately, it did get away, but we managed to save Kelly and stabilize Dell, and uh, on the way out of the cave, uh, I was starting to feel a bit tired, worn out by the fight, so I encouraged the rest of the group to go ahead to the hospital without me, while I took a bit of a breather. Uh, they eventually agreed with some uh, convincing and we split our separate ways. They made it to the hospital safely, and Dell got seen to by the doctors. Unfortunately, they also ran into the sheriff, who, uh, not entirely convinced by their story of what, what happened to Dell and why they were all so injured, uh, placed his deputy in the hospital to watch them and make sure they didn't leave. They got into a little, a few, uh, let's say shenanigans while they were at the hospital. Also, noticing a familiar face being brought in by ambulance, missing an arm. <clears throat> the young man who they had spoken to the previous hours before and had given a sweet to apparently had left his room in the ho in the hotel and gotten attacked. Meanwhile, I, back at the uh, cave lair, made my way back to the side of the battle and put together a, a few details, managing to track down where the uh, Windy Ghoul had gone to following its trail out into the woods and to a rather oddly placed structure, a clandestine facility of some sort with cameras and defenses. And putting two, to two, two and two together, I ascertained my current theory is that the creature came from said facility. Uh, having gained that inf insight and uh, not feeling very confident about my chances at infiltrating said structure, I made my way back to the hospital where to regroup with the rest of the group. As I arrived, my nephew was investigating certain uh, screams, gunshots, etc coming from the area of the wounded young man. I was not entirely uh, drawn to such a situation as I was still fairly winded from the previous battle and wanted to make sure that Dell was alright. 
since he was nearly on the verge of death last I had seen him. And so I made my way up into the in the direction of Dell's room while Oliver made his way to the uh, screens. Peeking into the room, he noticed uh, many dead bodies, as well as the young man from previously seeming covered with the blood of the rest of the people, mostly around his mouth area. Obviously, he uh, didn't want to become in the same state as the rest of the group, rest of the people on the ground, so he made a quick retreat, only to be followed by said young man, now turned monster, and a chase ensued. He tried to make his, Oliver tried to make his way up the stairs, and nearly made it, only to uh, trip at the last step and get dragged back through the door screaming about a baby windigo i believe and that was where we ended <clears throat> excellent all right so if anyone has a um, you may mark xp sir for your recap and if anyone has another improvement there you go all right go ahead and take care of that yep uh, Meanwhile, if anyone has any other session moves that they should make at the beginning of the session, I think um, one of the things we can cover is um, I don't think there's a specific move anywhere for it, but one of the things to consider is has any time passed for you to have recovered any harm? Has enough time mm. passed for you to recover any harm? <clears throat> I don't think so. Um, because we we ended on a, a bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oliver got dragged, <laughs> running, you know, boots clumping up the stairs, one one foot in a cast. Right. Right. He's Tripped. Like boot. Yeah. Fell in. Uh, gra grabbed the door. And uh, the, the the big boot couldn't make it through. And then his body got just pulled back as he yelled out, Baby Wendigo! Yep. <clears throat> That's all right. All right. So that does bring us right up to the second. So at the, um, at the stairwell, you got yanked back into, right? Did mm -hmm. you get yanked back or just part of the way? You yanked back in, way? I think. All right. So you got yanked back in the stairwell with Baby Ghoul, Baby Wendigo, whatever you called it. And uh, that leaves uh, Todd out in the hallway. Uh, you saw that happen. So we're going to put Baby Wendigo in here somewhere and you with him. And um, so Desmond is still outside the hospital or just starting to come in? What? I think he... So he had already... He'd run into Oliver downstairs and gotten the gotten directions to Dell's room. And then and Oliver went to the... He ran and... Gotcha. So yeah. you have made it upstairs. We'll, we'll say Most that probably. you're in, in the room with Dell when uh, Todd has stepped out and uh, seen the Wendigo yank him back in. Let's move these two guys in a minute over on this side where the, maybe the stairwell is over there. Okay. So now we just have some kind of general placement on our scene as to where everyone is with regard to each other, maybe. Uh, all right, so let us begin. Todd, you get the first reaction since you saw him get yanked in through the, the stairwell door. What do you do? I will duck my head into the room and that that uh, police officer who was uh, the deputy was supposed to be keeping an eye on... Yep. Uh, Laclede. Yep, deputy Laclede, Laclede. yes. Yep. Uh, keep, keeping an Indeed, eye on uh, Dell, not Desmond. Right. 
Yes. Um. Deputy, someone just got attacked outside. And I will run and go to the door. You're going to make me put a deputy on this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Meh. He's, he's with my guy. character. He's... We're just going to use this guy. Maybe. If we're not yet. There he is. So that'll be our our little uh, sort of paramilitary dude. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, you know, someone who can die quickly. That's who he's going to be. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Don't get attached to the deputy. He's not long for life. If he gets anywhere near that goal. All right. So, um, very good. Then I think um, really what we need to do is just, so you, and you start booking it down the hall. All right. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the stairwell, uh, Sam, the ghoul, is um, got you pinned to the, to the landing there where the door is. He's just pulled you back through the door. That caught you by surprise, so you weren't able to hang on to anything. And you are now sitting there, and he is on top of you, and he is uh, just salivating all over you, all over. So he's got he's got um, blood in his eye, and down his face, and all over his clothes because he was just done killing a bunch of people. And it looks like you're next. What are you going to do? So, did he pull me down the stairs, or am I still on that? You're on floor. that same landing. He's just yanked you in from there. He's he's maybe still at the very top of the stairs for that landing or where that door is. Okay. Uh, can I, I am just going to try to, like, faint away from him and then try and run away. Like, try and, like, move past him. Like, I'm going to jump to, over the go downstairs. Mm -hmm. He's and then kind of he... got you on the ground, and he's on okay. top of you. So it looks like you're going to be in a physical, physical fight. <laughs> Yay! Uh... That's what it looks like to me, unless you can come up with some other clever way no. to get out of that. Uh... I don't think I don't think uh, there's a juke in there for you anywhere. All right. to, to get well, back. luckily I still have that blessed uh, switchblade on me. That's not actually blessed; it's actually cursed. Oliver doesn't know. <laughs> perfect. That sounds perfect. All right. Okay, so off comes the switchblade. Mm -hmm. And you try to stick it where? Uh, in its eye. All right, let's find out how that goes. Why don't you do a kick some ass? And let's see, if, right. see who what kicks what. All right, so you get to mark XP. Good for you. <laughs> uh, and so what he's going to do is he is going to um, just pin down that arm and uh, reach out and just bite your bicep. He's just going to bite right into that sucker. And um, you you sudden, suddenly start feeling a little bit like the people that are downstairs currently not moving and in a pool of their own blood. You start to feel that way. You're going to take three harm. And uh, so you mark that off. Mm -hmm. And where does that leave you right now? I know you you are a little bit harmed. Oh, I'm that's unstable. going unstable. That's going to make you unstable. Mm -hmm. All right. So with mm -hmm. four harm total, you are now unstable. And so that means yeah. you are bleeding. Like he's grabbed onto an artery somewhere in your arm and you just can kind of now feel your pulse just coloring the the whole landing up there all right so let's move back over to um dell and desmond in the room what are you guys doing todd's just booked it out of there and run down the hall so dell is in uh, extremely bad shape yeah. um really not eager to engage in any type of combat, which he's been very uh, poor in so far. <laughs> um, <laughs> hence the I hospital. Think, yeah, hence the hospital. And it's only going to get, it's only going to get worse if he really tries to, to use any type of kick some ass actions. So given that, um, did anybody sound the alarm yet? 
Uh, I poked my head in and yelled for the deputy. Okay. Uh, but I didn't, like, pull the fire alarm. Yeah, I'm going to pull the fire alarm. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to miserably uh, crawl out of my bed with whatever is attached to me without trying to, without uh, disengaging whatever life support hoses are currently connected and um, smash the fire alarm uh, if necessary and yank that sucker down. Uh, it's just a thing up on the wall and it's got a red lever yep. on it that you can grab. Okay, so that's your move. What's Desmond mm -hmm. going to do? <clears throat> That depends. Uh, there are the. Where is everyone currently? Where am I in relation to everyone? So you're in the um, hospital room next to Dell, mm -hmm. and there is a sheriff's deputy in there with you. He was sitting down, uh, looking through a magazine or whatever, because there's not a whole lot of action. He's not really worried about, you know. Dell hitting the road. <laughs> he's just there babysitting. And you've come in and you've started to maybe talk with then Todd. Todd was in there too. But then Todd walks out to check the hall because he knows Oliver. He probably he probably had some brief exchange about where's Oliver and you said, oh, he went that away downstairs by the ER or whatever. So he, he Todd pokes his head out and he sees Oliver coming out of the stairwell and all of a sudden being tripped to the ground and pulled back into the stairwell. So he knows that's not how Oliver normally ambulates, right? He does not move that way under normal circumstances. So, and then the whole baby ghoul thing. So he quickly sounded the alarm and ran off. That's where you're at. That's where you're at. What do you do? Okay. okay. <clears throat> um, so just as a heads up, the, uh, the improvement that I took is take another move, take a move from another playbook, and I took the initiate move, ancient fighting arts. Oh, yes. Okay. Because because my main weapon is a sword, <clears throat> it makes sense. When I use an old fashioned hand weapon, I inflict plus one harm and get plus one when I roll to protect something. Nice. That's cool. Yep. All right. Did so, you get that onto your sheet? Okay, you dragged it over or did whatever, and you got it on your sheet. Yeah. Fine. Good. Excellent. Yep. Okay. So, uh, since I am in the room with the deputy, what I do is going to depend on whether or not I can control myself, I guess. Unless I'm wrong. Okay. I think, um, I think you should act under pressure. Because he's getting up and uh, going to run right past you. Okay. Act under pressure. Here we go. Huh? Partial success. I think that works. I think that that'll stop you from ripping his soul out of his body or whatever you, you do, Mister. Yeah, I, I don't rip his whole soul out. Just take a Mister White bit. Court Vampire. <clears throat> All right. So he is going to run out into the hallway. Okay. And start booking it down. He kind of will. He'll stop for a second to figure out what's going on. And now the alarms are, I guess, in the hallway. And, of course, that has caused a couple other rooms that have people in them to start to become concerned about what's going on. You can hear some cries out from those rooms, like, what's going on? What's happening? Is there a fire? You know, that kind of thing. All right. <clears throat> uh, all right. So, Todd, you, you're at the door now uh, to the stairwell. And... Uh, through the little window that's there, that's got the you know wire mesh across the window uh, for the glass, you see down down there um, there is a ghoul ripping into uh, Todd's arm. What do you do? Uh, it's not I the am... same ghoul you you saw in the mine either. This just looks like a, a freshly yeah. a fresh. It looks like Sam, actually. Yeah. Damn it. Well. That's that's issue two. <laughs> uh, first, uh, the these doors gotta open outward. I'm gonna, you know, if if the if they're in the way, I'm gonna try to slam the door open and knock <clears throat> this Wendigool off of him, uh, or I'll hey. jump in and try to kick him. 
Yeah. So, um, yeah. So in this case, um, <clears throat> the door, I believe this door actually goes in. So even easier for you, because it would be like for a, an escape, you would have the door go in. It's only at the, the bottom where you have to kind of pull it out or whatever. So yeah. you, um, you push the door open and there they are. And what are you going to do now? Uh, kick some face. Kick him. All right. So I think you need <laughs> yeah. to kick some face. I don't think that's how you spell face. Fast, kick some fast. fast yeah, there All right. Go. Well, that's a good partial success. So, so <clears throat> you're going to inflict harm on that person. And uh, you're going to, let's, I think your foot can probably do one harm, right? Probably. I've got, I got a, a plus one. <clears throat> Um, All right, and so you'll get he'll stop gnawing on your companion there. However, um, as you kick him, he because he sees you come in and he he kind of prepares and gets ready, and you smack into him, and he uh, he tries to just grab your leg, and he's going to do um, two harm with his claws raking down. Well, he has one arm, and he rakes down your leg and just rips your pant leg open. Um, and some of your skin there. So that'll be two harm. Okay, I am now unstable. Oh, oh wow, we're taking <laughs> you all out. Nice. Hit okay. that four mark. Exactly. Well, that's interesting. All right, so... Um, yeah, the unstable good. buddies. Very good. Yeah. All right, so um, Oliver... Mm. Todd came in and kicked him off of you, and so now you're you're a bit. What are you going to do now? He looks like he's starting to, re, you know, he's just been kicked off and kind of reached out and raked his leg at the same time, and so now he looks like he's getting ready to come back again for for more. What what do you do? Is he, is he anywhere near the uh, like railing, going down to the? bottom level yeah there isn't a whole lot of gap in the middle are you thinking about putting him yeah there? pushing you him can, over you can certainly knock him down a flight of stairs yeah do that i'd like to try i want to try and do that just and kick him you just whack him and knock him down <laughs> all right that sounds sounds perfectly good if you can get a partial success with that i think that would probably be all right nope <laughs> if you get another xp and you just tangle your legs up in him um, yeah. And that allows him to do another harm to you. Um, so you're going to take a harm. You don't deal any harm. And you're kind of just wrapped up. You're just trying to kick at him, flailing. I'm trying to get him down. And, and he's scrabbling with you, unfortunately. His clawed arm is doing a better job than your feet are of kicking him down the stairs. Yeah. So you're going to take, uh, take a harm there. So that you're, what, now five harm. Yes. You're getting there, buddy. Um, I did level up. <laughs> Oh, but Ooh, you nice. get to add an improvement. Maybe that will help you. That will be brilliant because um, when you reach, let me look here, harm of, yeah, so uh, with an unstable wound, you also will suffer additional harm as you bleed or uh, whatever. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, what we're going to do is... Um, we're going to skip back over now to this uh, sh sheriff's deputy who is going to come down and um, he has a gun, which is out now. And he's got all this ruckus going on over in the stairwell over here. So he's going to um, stand in the doorway of the stairwell right behind Todd, who's on the landing and trying to also get this guy off of you while you're trying to kick him down the stairwell. And he's just going to plug him right with his gun. He's going to try to shoot him with his gun. So, um, bang, 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 bang. You know, he starts just emptying his magazine uh, at him. And so uh, what I want you to do is, is actually there is a move, Todd, that I want you to make. And that is, um, I think it's act Help out. under pressure. No, I want you to act under pressure. Okay. This is... Uh, this is a dangerous situation with him un unloading his gun. So I just want you to act under pressure. Let's see if 
don't if anything bad might come of it. No, perfect. Hey. All right. So in this case, you, you're going to kind of move out of the way and you're actually going to uh, be able to help get that ghoul in a position where he's kind of up off of Oliver and boom, do, 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 do. And so the ghoul is going to fall back and go down the stairs. So he's down a whole flight, uh, you know, to the next landing, um, which isn't that far, but it's far enough that uh, that he's down there and um, he he lands hard. Oliver, you're hurt. Todd, you're hurt. The sheriff's deputy is like, holy crap. He's like, he can't believe what he just saw and shot. So he's a little bit, uh, uh, I would say, kind of in battle Keep shooting. Shock. Keep shooting. Don't stop <laughs> shooting. Uh, he goes, I got him. I got him. And so no, he's like, no. are, you, are you okay? Are you okay? You don't look good. You no. Look, okay. look at me. I'm not okay. Shoot. Keep shooting. Right. Why are you stopping? <laughs> All right. He's like, don't move. Don't move. And the ghoul, the ghoul down at the the flight of stairs is just laying there. It doesn't seem to be moving. Huh. Todd, what do you do? Uh, I, 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 I saw Desmond. Yes, yes, Desmond. Um, uh, grab that wind to go in the tunnels and and choke it from afar. Yeah. Uh, does this one down at the bottom look uh, worse off than that one? Because that one was still able to, to run away. Uh, you just saw like a magazine of bullets just get unloaded into him. And he you know, he did the whole, yeah. you know, and then falling down the stairs and landed hard. Okay. I, 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 I know there are a lot of things that don't get... Uh, taken out by bullets that aren't silver. So I'm I'm still sort of wary. I'd like to I'd like to read a bad situation and and try to get a get an idea of you know, is this that, thing is this thing down? Is it down or is it down? Not down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks okay, down just barely. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. So it looks like this is probably uh, maybe because it was just turned that that, that those bullets actually just killed. Okay. Okay. Oliver, I think, I think, I think he got it, but you probably, there's probably something to do to, to you know, maybe, Keep it dead, like yeah, like it's possible. Maybe it might regenerate or something. You know, to, right? you know, burn that, cut its head off, or burn the body, or mm -hmm. you know, consecrate the ground it's on, or Wouldn't something. Have I... gotten over there by that point, or yes, yeah. So you you certainly could have arrived. You heard the gunshots. You've come down the hallway, and. You, Based on what I know of Wendigos before, does this look, does this fit the description? Is it giving off that same cold aura? Or is it just a, what? Uh, that's a good question. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to be, um, you can do an investigate, sure. Investigate and see. All right, you get to hold two. What would you like to know? What sort of creature was it? This yep. looks like a weak version of a Wendigo or Ghoul. Okay. Uh, and so, could I tweak what can hurt it to what can make it stay dead? So if you go down there and you're, you're kind of checking it out, you go down the stairs, you're getting close to it, looking at it over... And, and because this is so freshly turned that it hasn't actually solidified into its monster, uh, monstrous 
form, so to speak. Um, and so it's, it's more zombie at this point than ghoul, right? Because it's just been freshly turned. And so as far as you can tell, um, you, that there are things you can do to make this fully permanent in case you're wrong, but it appears that this ghoul is dead. Okay. In what ways could I do I would I be able to make sure it's permanent? Just in like case. probably removing its head or burning the body. That's either. All right. Well, I don't know of any way of any fire that's directly nearby. So I'm just gonna try. I don't know. If someone tripped the fire alarm. You think there'd be something nearby? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna behead it with my sword. Okay. All right, yeah. I mean, De deputy, can you help me back to my room? Why I'm not feeling does it so well. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> All right, so the rest of you limp back to the road, and the, the deputy gets on his radio and he calls his boss and he goes, "You're not going to believe this, boss. They're all they're exactly right, man. This thing was this thing was crazy." So he starts talking. You guys walk back to the thing, and he's in the stairwell, uh, dealing with the. Whatever's left. Desmond, you feel like you've sufficiently secured the body from, okay. from being a date. I will take it out of the landing, try to carry it up to the uh, the hallway. Okay. I guess, where it'll be easier for whoever needs to, t to deal with the body to get to it. <clears throat> um, uh, okay, so as you pick up the body, the sheriff deputy goes, uh, uh, Maybe you should just leave it there. It's like the, this counts as a crime scene. You shouldn't be tampering with this stuff. I mean, you've already... Ugh. I can't believe I'm going to say this. You cut that kid's head off already. Well, Let's just contain it in here. I'll put up some tape or something. i got to go out to my car for that. So maybe I'll just hang out up here for a little bit. If you'd prefer me, if you want me to leave the body here. Oh, it's just you just, and the sheriff. Just you and the deputy. Uh, if you want me to leave us. the body here, are you sure you want me to leave the body here? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you should. Uh, until the until the hey. sheriff says otherwise. I'm just suggesting putting it in a place where it'll be easier to deal with. <clears throat> I guess this is okay. I mean, what do we... We just gotta, you know... That's good. That's good. All right. <clears throat> so the sheriff calls for one of the nurses from up the hallway. The deputy? Uh, yeah, the deputy. Um, he he actually calls for some staff and orderly and whatever. He's like, hey, get some help down here. And so they come down, get that fire alarm turned off. And so they get it set up and they basically put an orderly on the stair on the staircase to keep people from going in there and uh, so forth. And so he's he's securing that scene. You guys have a few minutes of of uh, alone time together, if you like, as you all go back into Dell's room. As I'm making my way back towards Dell's room, I'm just going to take out a handkerchief and wipe the blood off my blade before I shield it. Okay. I it. I'm going to get in Dell's bed with him. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's another you bed. Know you know you're not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's another bed in there. No, you're not. <laughs> It's just gonna go bleed on him. It bit him me, man. Bed. It bit me. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. You can see right through my leg. Send me a what happened? Cool now. Give can us... I be a Wendigo now? I don't want to be a Wendigo. Impossible. Who, who actually got bitten? How many of us, uh, besides myself and Oliver, who else? <laughs> we all. We we all got bitten. Okay. You got claws. Some of you got just got claws. A couple of you got. All right. I'm pretty sure I, I think haven't it's... even been harmed yet. 
Oliver. My and, issue is just that I'm tired. Yeah, Oliver and Dell and hungry. Oliver and Dell have been bitten. I think Todd has been clawed. I think I think that's oh, the case. There's yeah. a lot of rhyming going on in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no. some unintentional rhyming. I, I just don't want anyone to break out in rap, okay? No, I, no freestyling. All right. Um, so I think that um, some nurses and some medical staff will come in and help help you, uh, Oliver, and start getting, uh, getting you stabilized. So you can uncheck that unstable. Um, you didn't cool. really have. You, you weren't really exposed that much that you would have lost any, any more harm, so. Um, you you can uh, get back. After this fight, you can you can actually get back to, uh, two harm less than you less than you. So okay. now you you're going to be at two. So I believe we got Dell. Dell, you're hanging out at four harm. Yeah. Oliver, you're at two. Desmond, free as a bird. Todd, hungry is hungry as a vulture. I think I'm at Todd, you you are unstable too, so they need to, they need to dress your wounds and get right. you bandaged up and whatever. So yeah. luckily you're in a hospital, so you can get back to harm. And okay. I'm check you're unstable as well. I was at five when I got two back, so I think I'm at three. Oh, okay. All right. So where's the body? Is that we need to bring that ghoul to a crematorium or something? What's I going on into, now? Uh, if I turn into a Wendigo, don't kill me, please. We're gonna have to tell that to the deputy. He's very insistent right now. Insistent on what? Move the body What's he doing? the crime scene, apparently. Oh, he's in a big world of trouble, world of pain. I did manage to make sure it was decapitated before I left it. So it should at least, hopefully that'll hold it off. I'm afraid, I don't know, we don't know, it's, it's too dangerous. I won't feel comfortable until that thing is burning on fire for a long time and turns to dust. At least let the police see the body that they can verify that we've been telling the truth. <laughs> you think that you think they're going to verify? They might believe it. They might see it, but as soon as they call their commanding officers, they're going to get instructions to say this thing never exists. Or they're going to put the blame on somebody who they already got in jail. Or us. Or us. <laughs> Don't trust the police. How, how is it the actual monster of the group that has more hope for humanity than the rest of them? <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Well, let's put that aside for now. We have some information regarding the progenitor of that monster. Then what is it? Well, remember how I held back? Um, I went back and checked the site. Managed to find its trail. Tracked it back to where it is. I think it came from. Turns out there's uh, some sort of cl clandestine facility out in the middle of the woods. Hmm. Trail ended there. What do you mean by a clandestine facility? Well, it was also beaten path. It was also beaten path. Um, there was a lot of cameras and a big wall. Sounds like the serial killer or the government. A rather wealthy. Why not both? Dell, are there both? Is there a serial killer working for the government? Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> you better believe it. In fact, I would say most serial killers kind of work for the government. Government is the worst. Right. 
Well, anyway, I thought you all should know about that. So did it look more like a laboratory or a military base? I'm not overly familiar with modern military bases. Did you see any tanks outside? I did Have not. Have you been to a <laughs> Did you see Don't any you... aircraft? I saw, I saw no people, just a lot of cameras. No helicopter on top of building? Nothing like that? I don't think so. You don't I, see those I, black copters. They're, you can't see those, Adele. Come on. <laughs> I mean, the walls were rather large. I didn't really see the roof of many of the buildings. There might have been. We got to get over there. We got to get out of this hospital and over to that facility as fast as possible. I feel like, given our track record, we, uh, so far might be better off healing up for a bit i feel like there's no time you're i mean really, you're right most, several of you have nearly died today well desmond you got magic can't you like heal us or something i could if my juice wasn't all out currently what juice? juice? I could I could attempt it, but it could also be very harmful to me. Start with Dell. <laughs> <laughs> What's this juice you're talking about? How do we refill you with it? <laughs> He's clearly uncomfortable with that question. <laughs> it's, not, it's it's a difficult thing to explain to people who don't understand it already it's complicated magic I'm sure I can process is a it. very complicated thing it's quite quite complicated I'm, I'm, I'm quite well well read on these sort of matters well, I, I might be able to, like, to concoct uh, something Well, somebody better concoct mm. this juice so that we can get you filled up and you can heal us. Quickly, we gotta get to that facility. I may be able to find something somewhere, but I don't like... I don't like trying to get it from places like this. Get, get it? I mean, we... Imagine this, like, uh... this is real. This isn't proverbial. I thought you were talking about something like <laughs> metaphoric or something like that. Well, if you want it done quick, yes, obviously. If I were given some time, I could recharge naturally, maybe. But if you want it in a rush, I have to find some sort of I have to refuel via substance. There's a cafeteria downstairs. I'm sure there's someone there who could give you something. Yeah, they always got juice. You might be right. I think I'll go check. And I'll <laughs> <get rid of it. laughs> Maybe I can find something with good uh, nutritional value. Okay. I right. am not <laughs> going to the cafeteria. Yeah. <laughs> I... I'm just trying to get out of that situation. Are you stopping <laughs> into another room on your way? Uh, no. I, I, not unless I can't stop myself. All right. Where? Where? He's not going to willingly do any. What's your intention? He's not going to willingly feed on someone in a hospital. Yeah, but a hospital's filled with. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, a lot you don't have to feed on somebody. We we'll all know what you're thinking. Juice bag. <laughs> Little juice boxes. In every it's room. Just right. right. All right. Right so now, we're... I am just leaving, getting myself. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going. I'm just trying to go somewhere. Perfect. And hopefully not get overwhelmed by hunger. Okay. I think that you need to. 
Make another roll. Okay. Here we go. Act under pressure. You're under a lot of pressure from the hunger. I mean, that's that's really uh, why. Wow. Really good rolls. All right. So how do you how do you want to interpret that? Uh, Obviously, keeping your cool. Are you using weird instead of cool? I'm just. Do you get to use so. weird instead of cool? No? Okay. So you're just nope. acting under pressure. You're keeping your I'm just cool. Keeping keeping my cool. I'm taking deep breaths, not looking at anyone directly, making my way outside the building. No eye contact. Got it. All right. You, I need to yep. get myself some sunglasses or something. Okay. All right. So you head down um, to the main lobby area. Uh even go back outside um, you're just trying to stay away from people but you got to deal with this hunger somehow what's what are you thinking about you're feeling weak mm-hmm. and hungry yeah like mm-hmm. low blood sugar is mm-hmm. yeah I gotta find somewhere to eat, something to eat, or I'm... things are gonna get much worse, eventually. What what does Desmond usually feed on? So my head canon has been that he uh, hasn't fed since he woke up, so he was already on low gas tank, as it was. So you've not actually, because it hasn't been that long since you woke up. It's yeah, it, it hasn't been very long. Like how long are you? How long okay. do you think? Because this would be all of your origin stories, kind of where you formed your group. I would, I would imagine you. like maybe six months at most. Okay, so within within a, a half year's time, you all have kind of encountered each other and formed your group, and he, that Desmond has not fed and uh, in, in all year. that time in, and in in half a year plus almost whatever a, was before uh, almost a hundred over a hundred yeah. years yeah so, we might be able to write he, that off as is, some of that was like stasis right you're right yeah like yeah still he is uh starved right now it's why he bear wakes up so from dead it's why he looks so undead. Is that's the way I'm imagining it? Kind of he looks so undead place. because he hasn't, because this is when he hasn't fed in a while. Okay. So, hmm. So normally, when you have fed in the past, you you don't draw blood. How do you feed? Uh, I think we worked this out before because it's via oh. eye contact. Yeah, so actually you are mm. drawing psychic energy, life force um, mm. out of them, Through the windows right? to the soul. Yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah. Drawing energy out of their soul via the windows. Right. So maybe a sensitive might actually see some transaction happening through the ether yeah. as you are gazing into their eyes and they're like locked onto yours and you just begin to like yeah. draw it, the life force out of them. So, right. okay, yep. And, it, and he can't, like, I get the suggestion of going for someone who's already dying, I guess. But that's someone who's already low on life force anyway. So it has a higher possibility of them dying from it. Which would mean he killed someone. As opposed to skimming. Yeah. Right? Just kind of grabbing a little bit of life force from somebody who's got... Which is why he avoids hospitals, because generally they're full of people who he are he would be more likely to kill by feeding off of. Right. And there's so, probably a little boost with uh, you taking the last of the life force. Right? Yeah. Maybe like 
Absolutely. So potent at the very end. Is there anywhere nearby the hospital, specifically, where other people might congregate? Sure, there well, are like some office buildings. So there's probably where there's doctor offices and clinics and you know things like that uh, around, and as well as some other things. Strip, uh, there's probably a strip mall and you know okay. grocery store and various other shops um, and such. So not no one out now because it's still kind of. I mean, have you? It's, See, yeah, it's I'm, nighttime, right? Not kept it's close. Been a few it's, hours. Probably, it's probably closer to the mid morning, right? The meaning yeah. uh, before dawn still, but mm -hmm. um, still before dawn, but maybe three or four in the morning. How far away is the restaurant from earlier? Uh, that's actually going to be a little ways away, probably a few miles, two or three miles. Okay. Is there a closer one or? Somewhere where people might be going. Probably that breakfast. isn't open. Probably that isn't open. Those will open it. If, if it opens, the blizzard's really bad. So if it opens, it would be, you know, five in the morning, four in the morning, five, something like that. People, employees would start showing up and prepping. So what you've got right now is um, a, a deserted area. Hospital is really about the only thing going on. You say on they might be prepping, right? The restaurants that might be prepping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they have to do some prepping to, for breakfast hours that might start at five or six in the morning. So. Okay, I, I'm gonna try and find one of those restaurants nearby. Okay. All right. We'll say there's a little hole in the wall, kind of, you know, a morning breakfast place. Egg and I, or something. Rondo's, Rondo's <laughs> diner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, all right. So. Yeah, I'm just gonna find one of those places. Try knocking on the back door. Okay. All right. So you will. Um, yeah. So. Um, the back door will open and there will be a guy that's, you know, looks like he's uh, been just like getting stuff ready in the kitchen. And all that kind of stuff. Does so, he look healthy? Yeah, it looks, okay. it looks good. For now. <laughs> we'll see what happens when you get done with it. <laughs> all right. So are you yeah, going to make eye contact with him then? Well, first, I'm going to talk to him. Uh, I'm going to say, I uh, apologize for the inconvenience. I'm just, I haven't eaten in a long while. I was wondering if he might be willing to offer me just some spare scraps. Dumb for calling it out. <laughs> Makes them feel better to ask for permission, even if they don't understand what they're giving. Gotcha. Man, it's freezing cold out there. You don't. What? Well, uh, yeah, just come on in. Good grief. It's freezing out there. Thank you very much. I'm getting Thank frostbite you. just looking at you. I, I really do appreciate it. All right. I'll, I'll step inside. And so then we kind of fade to black over there and cut the scene back to the hospital and um, I want you to act under pressure um, to not kill him. Okay. I really hope I don't kill him. So if you if you roll a miss on your act under pressure that will end in a death. How oh, yeah. good oh. grief. All right. Uh, you, are, I for, you are. You that's are. That's what fully I get for not eating for so long. Yep. yep. But, but in I the middle get... of it, you suddenly had it all come back to you. You can imagine what that's like. That might be an interesting journal entry of what that was like for you to have given in and started to feed and have uh, yourself get lost in that. And then just 
lose control. He took over. And the next thing you know, the next thing you know, he's dead. All right. So, meanwhile, back at the hospital, the rest of you are sitting around in this hospital room. Um, all of you, the worst for wear. What do you do? What do you do now? Desmond has excused himself and practically staggered out of the room, keeping his composure. You could tell he was doing his best to keep his composure and walk normally, but he was weak. I'm getting an XP from that, don't I? Oh, you do. Yeah, that missile will give you an XP. Oh. <laughs> nope. Okay. You got a prep cook, too. Out of that. <laughs> yeah. That guy really needs oh. some, you know, M&M's in his pocket or something. Some vitamins. <laughs> Made me hungry. B12, man. Gonna, B12. Yeah. I'm going to call around yeah. and see if I can get pizza. Do you think there's a Domino's near here? Uh, 30 minutes for your money back. The good news is you have a cafeteria in the building that can deliver, but um, there isn't a pizza right. place. Well, I mean, we could we could just call Desmond. Morning. He's going there anywhere. <laughs> Like, oh, hey, you know, bring us back and a couple extra sandwiches, too. If you have any leftovers. Yeah. I'll sweet talk one of the nurses to go down and get us all some food. Uh, I think we should get a small sample of this ghoul so we could do a biopsy later. Of the what? Like a, a piece of flesh, something, a finger. From, from all right. Could you have waited until after the nurse took my food order? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I guess Todd's got to do it. I mean, I think you and I are the worst worst for wear here. Yeah, you two stay... Uh, huh. <clears throat> hey, stay, stay, stay lying down. Hey, Todd. I can, I can make it me. over. Alva, you get on the floor. Get away from my bed. <laughs> and when he gets close, I'm going to hand him my uh, one of the silver scalpels I took. Just in case. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so I'll take that in the pocket. Of... Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I need something something good. Might work better than a nurse switch. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. Um. Well, let me let me go see what the deputy is doing. Um, maybe I can maybe I can sneak sneak around and uh, get something for us. Uh, Sounds good. Dill, you think you think a finger's good? Yeah, I think that's more more than good. Okay, I'll try to avoid something that's got our blood on it. It's gonna be tough. And so I will, uh, you know, scalpel in my pocket, uh, head back over to the the body. Uh, okay, in the stairwell. Yeah. Well, yeah. Where where has the what, what, what's what's the deputy doing? Um, he is he's not there. He's gone down to his car okay. to get some supplies like the yellow. Do not cross this line, tape, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, excellent. Then I will act quickly. Okay. Um, I... There's an orderly that's standing there to keep people out of the stairwell, but he, he may not ah, okay. try to keep you out since you're part of it. But... <laughs> uh, excuse me, I, I, I think I lost my ring in there. Uh, it, and he he's got a, a big, you know, green stoned ring on one of his fingers, um, and so he he like uh, the other other hand here. <laughs> um, I the 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 deputy just saved us from getting attacked there, but I I, I think I I lost my ring. It's just it's right down here. Where do you think it is? And he kind of goes in there and like he's being helpful. He's trying to help you find it. Uh, let's see, and I'll, I'll look around and 
uh, you know, there's there's nothing on the ground here. Big pool of blood. Oh, you know, it must it must have slipped uh, and and fallen down. Uh, once, oh God, that's a huge. Let me be careful. The, the the ring must have fallen down down the flight of stairs. I'll I'll take it. You know, half a flight at a time. All right. So why don't you roll a manipulate someone uh, move? And because that's what it sounds like. Uh, yeah. You've given him a, a reason, and so now you're going to tell him what to do. Maybe look someplace else while you. You're going to like grab the finger off the body. Is that what you're trying to do? Uh, yeah, when he is uh, not looking, I'm going to try to grab that scalpel and slice off the finger. All right. And so, unfortunately, though, with a miss, <laughs> with a miss, you get to mark XP. Yeah, okay, yeah. And and he he is sticking with you the whole time. Okay. And so he he just doesn't want to let you go down those stairs. He'd be like, no, that's not a good yeah. idea. No, no, no. I think that deputy would be pretty mad if anybody went down by that. And besides, it's kind of starting to stink, don't you think? But, you know, it could be a biohazard. That's a biohazard you can go down there. You know what? If he finds your ring, if you know, so he's just like completely stonewalling you from yeah, going down. Uh, there. Well, may, maybe I can uh, go, go, you know, take the elevator down and, and come up the stairwell from, from below. All right. So you, you, uh, you're like, okay, man, no problem. So you step out in the hall and you head over to the elevators to yeah, go downstairs. I'll, I'll, I'll poke my head back in the room like, hey, this guy won't let me in, but I'm going to, I'm going to, Try from below. All right. All right. Good luck. Okay. All right. Uh, go, you know, take the elevator down two floors. Yep. Find the stairwell. Um, and I will, I'll make it up. Do I, do I hear the, the orderly in the stairwell or can I tell if he's there or at the door? Yeah, so by now you get down to the ground floor and or are you gonna to go to the basement and try to get to take the stairwell from there? I'm not probably that way. Uh we were on the second floor. Um yeah. yeah, I guess I'm gonna go to the basement. Okay, um, so that's kind of parking two, garage. Two floors there's down. there's yeah, so so Whatever. you get up that's the facilities yeah. floor and then below that's a parking garage and like the second level parking garage and so on. So you have have some underground parking because of the weather, so it's uh, good to have underground parking at the hospital. Um, yeah. And then there's a parking garage next to it, etc. But um, in this case, you, um, yeah. So you can go ahead and, and see. I want you to um, act under pressure to not get caught by anybody poking in and out of the stairwell or the deputy coming back or what have you. So act under pressure. You've got to get um, in and out. Grab yourself a little scalpelized finger off of this body. Okay. Success. Okay. Eleven. Nice. All right. Very good. So you can get out, and um, you've got yourself what you needed to get. Phew. Okay. So I sneak up from below, and you know, just slice off a little, little finger from this kid. Uh, and sneak back down and, and take the elevator back up. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll wipe the the scalpel on something and, you know, hide that away. Uh, and uh, no no luck. See? One, one ring. So. Uh, good, man. All right, man. Well, if we find it, I'll let you know. If anybody finds it, what does it look like again? Uh, it's it's just like this one here. It's a silver inset and a gr okay. jade like green stone. <clears throat> With a green thing. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll keep an eye out for it. It's it's unique. Sorry, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah, one of two of a kind. All right, um, so you guys, uh, you're going back in the room with the ring? 
Uh, I mean, not a ring. Finger? finger. A ring finger? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I've got, I've got his ring finger just to... Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Looks like this ring. Oh, wait. Uh, all right, so... Uh, what's What's the plan? Now you've got a finger. Now what? Well, got it. Um, I say, yeah. I, great work, Todd. Thanks a lot. Now we got to bring it to someone who knows what they're doing. Take a look at it under a microscope or something. <laughs> yep. We need a... One of Do those you have silver? Maybe, maybe, maybe we can touch it with silver and see what the reaction is. Start experimenting and stuff. Yeah, well, I, I used silver scalpel to cut it open so it uh, you know it, it it definitely is susceptible to that mm. um, yeah but it didn't like burn or anything or melt or have any type of unusual reaction actually I was going to mention this but um, kind of moved on but it did cut through that flesh and you did you do think maybe there was a little bit of sizzling going on oh a little bit okay it's already dead so, um, it's not like, uh, you know, an actual live monster, but, uh, definitely cut through, cut through, and it did sizzle just a little bit. So, it, okay. you, you do think silver would be a very, uh, useful tool. Yep. If only I'd remembered to bring my silver bullets. Yeah. <laughs> only god all right they got, they got confiscated on the plane or something i, I forgot them at tsa <laughs> you left them you left yeah. them you because you had to jump out of the plane <laughs> there we go you had to jump out of the plane so you did you parachuted down and then did some cross-country skiing um so there you go left it left, left him in the plane he was having a hard time he couldn't land Bad weather. All right. So that's what you get for missing a session. <laughs> jump out of planes. <laughs> you, had to, you had to jump out of the plane. The plane can't land. It's a bad thing. All right. Um, all right. So um, time passes. And Desmond, you wake up um, on the floor of the... Uh, the restaurant kitchen. You you kind of didn't really lose consciousness, but lost uh, awareness, perhaps, right? Um, with Blacked only out. with only the words Irving Diffie in your mind, the name of your first victim in over 100. And you wake up because you hear someone messing around um, at the back door. So you quickly dodge out of the way. You kind of roll up onto your feet and dodge out of the way. And um, two more people come in the back door and you duck mm -hmm. out behind them, back out into the cold. Um, it's the, the sun is just getting ready to come up. The, the sky is lighting up. The sun's not quite up yet. And you you make your way back to the hospital and to the rest of the team. All right, what is your plan for this next day? You've identified the, the monster. You've identified some of the monster's weaknesses. You've identified uh, victims of the monster. Where do we go from here? To the facility. I think so, yeah. Yeah. But after after Desmond heals us all. <laughs> okay. I will point out that as Desmond comes in, he looks a lot more, uh, doesn't look as like sickly as he did before. And his eyes, if you'd noticed previously, were like almost pale white at that point, are now vibrant blue. Desmond, you look a whole lot better. What type of juice did you drink?
OJ, Apple. He cooked up something. Liquor. <laughs> the last saving kind, I suppose. So can you heal us right, now? I will see what I can do. Thank you, sir. Go first. Go. All right. So, I believe part of use magic has a, has an effect that allows me to heal one harm. Oh. So, I can heal you, but it's going to take multiple rolls and multiple and a opportunities bit for fantastic failure. Yeah, so healing's not usually my special my specialty. So, just a heads up. So before you roll, what do you think might happen if you if you miss? Um. Hmm. That's open to anyone. What kind of things might happen should his magic? attempt to heal you fail i mean there are glitches so oh I instead of uh I, I would say instead of fully healing me maybe it just 50 percent heals me if he fails <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that when, when my <laughs> minimum is one harm <laughs> uh i the think effect it could be weakened Maybe it's maybe it takes longer for the healing to actually take effect. I don't know. I think I think maybe it's effective, but it takes some of his soul. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you you're you're not you're not totally in control of your powers here. You've just been feeding on this poor guy's soul, and, that makes and you sense. slip up. Are we talking about taking my soul or taking Dell's? No, you accidentally take Dell's. Ah. Uh. Like, oh, wait, that's the wrong magic. <laughs> or, it, like, it, it takes part of his soul in order to increase his healing, essentially. Like, redirecting the life force. That, maybe that would be a mix of the fess. Yeah. Yeah, so some of the glitches are like, the effect is weakened, the effect is of short duration. Or, like, you may be harm again, just the harm starts to return. Uh, you, t you take, meaning Desmond, takes one harm, ignore armor, magic. Or right. the magic draws immediate unwelcome attention, or it has a problematic side effect. So we've covered some of those things. That fit so some of those at things. least one of those things I don't think would actually work very well as a glitch. Because me taking one harm is automatically negated. Well, I think I could read that into um, you can heal him, but we're going to kind of keep track of your hunger. We'll start okay. making you hungry that, again. That makes sense. Okay. So one of those kinds of one of those side effects, either like I mistake, make a mistake and consume part of Dell's soul in the process of healing him or I take uh, I have to end up being hungry again or well I think, I um, think hunger goes grows maybe part of the consumption of the soul is losing uh, an experience point or something I think that would simplify the mechanics okay. so I, I I'm, I'm fine with uh, with some of those things so let's um Let's say that when it comes but to if healing... I, I, if I were to fail, I would be gaining an XP anyway. You're going to gain an XP, but they're going to... Your your target Take will end up me. with some kind of problematic side effect. Or right. maybe it will... It's of short duration. Your healing will fade, and they'll start taking harm again as the wounds re begin to return. So I, I think that seems to be fair for this. So... Um, I'm not sure that you you will feed on them while you're trying to heal them because you just fed. So I mean you're pretty full. You just yeah. killed somebody. So 
Um, let's just do that. Let's say that the healing will work, but either it's going to fade, like it won't actually last, and they'll start suddenly the bite wounds start to get worse and go back to the way they were, for example, or um, or so some other tear open after he starts doing some strenuous something. activity. Well, maybe. I mean, it, yeah, or. Or you could roll a 12. Or you start getting <laughs> hungry. All right, so let's go from there. Why don't you go ahead and roll your use magic? Okay. Now let's do one one roll for uh, each person, not multiple times each person. Let's just do one roll for each person. If you have time, you can... Uh... Oh, I said roll a 12. Yeah, yeah. That's partial yeah. success. So it's that's better, better than, a, than failing. Okay, yeah. plus, plus uh... three is good. <laughs> It could have a problematic side effect. It works imperfectly. Choose an effect and a glitch. Right, so the healing is the effect, and then the glitch, I believe... A problematic side effect, maybe? Seems like one of the... Or it could draw unwelcome attention, like one of the nurses notices. <laughs> You okay, so I think the rest of us too, though. A problematic <laughs> yeah. let him do that. Would be while you're trying to heal him, um, you make that psychic connection to do your psychic healing, and mm -hmm. are you healing? You're healing Dell, right? Yeah, he was the one I was starting with because he was the most hurt. Dell, you're gonna get flashes of Desmond's recent. I'll oh shit! In, I'll let no. you interpret that how you like. But there will be <laughs> okay. Just, oh. yeah, every, every, Tom, everybody, everybody sees Dell turning like uh, very pale. I mean, it's not like it's a gruesome scene. I just stared into the guy's okay. eyes, and he had a heart attack. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not a feeding that was like gory, but. Um, I would say it would be an emotional event. Yeah, you would mo more likely get the flashes of emotions from my perspective. Really, it wasn't uh, and from the victim's a, perspective. A full, a full vampire. Yeah, that, no, uh, he doesn't suck. So would blood. he? Would he be seeing this scene from my perspective or the or the victim's perspective? I don't. You sucked that entire victim into you, right? So yeah, it, it, uh, ripping someone's soul from it could their be body. even more could be even more confusing and have it be a mix of both right right so i like i said i'll leave that interpretation up to you this yeah. was a psychic uh -huh. killing um of where he was literally imagine a a violent bloodletting but it's more it's his soul it's the emotions it's you know his spirit his will maybe the guy saw his life flash before his eyes and had all of the ups and downs of life involved in that maybe he he thought about the people he was leaving behind maybe he it's thought the about name was irving deffy right yeah diffy right. if i diffy. put it in the chat okay. as well somewhere you can scroll up and find it. Okay. irving diffy um so you know who this guy and maybe you saw something like that maybe you saw something that even desmond doesn't remember because he sort of kind of blacked out during the feeding he lost so much lost control and just like got just just um, engorged himself on this guy's soul so you i'll let you guys figure that out you guys yeah that, that just right there that's that's drama fodder knock yourself out on that all right yeah again uh del just starts turning very pale all right and so um, you can and you can mark off all your harm your heal all harm Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, I, I have. This is energy I haven't fully digested yet. There you Maybe. go. He threw up a little bit on you. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> like like a, a mother bird feeding the baby. Psychic vomit. That's Psychic right. Vomit. Psychic vomit. There you go. It was a very emotional. The the cook. I don't know. Or something about his life that just vomited back on you. All right. Who's next? I haven't eaten in over a hundred years. I'm and I gorged myself on a full soul. It was a, it was it, a it's bound to happen. It's like having been not eaten for a week 
and then suddenly <laughs> eating a full five course meal. There you go. Ooh. That sounds perfect. All at once. <laughs> uh, I think Oliver is up next. All right, Oliver. <laughs> sure. It's time for Desmond to see what interesting thing happens there. Does Dell look shook? <laughs> yeah, Dell looks Del looks uh, like he saw something. Like he saw a ghost. Did it hurt? I didn't know it was going to hurt. Um, Dell's not talking at the moment. He, he, he looks like... Um, uh, if you ever, yeah, he's he's looking off into space, um, with a horrified expression on his face, and he looks totally uh, phased out, and pale, and terrified. Oliver, it's it's okay. The, the, these these things happen sometimes. It's it's just <laughs> a, a side effect of how magic works. Here, here, let me. Let me show you. Okay, uh, Desmond. And I, I will say, he was a good deal more hurt than you, I believe. So it shouldn't I'll, be. Oliver, you, would you like to? Do, do you need? Do you need to? To? Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not afraid. Hey, go ahead. It's look into my it's eyes. Family. It's family. There we go. All right. Got a ten. Fully healed. No problems. Okay. So he spends some time on you and heals you right up, and that magic seems to work just fine. All the way? Yeah. Yep. Nice. Recover oh, all wow, the that... oh, I don't know what Dell's going through. That was fine. <laughs> <Didn't... laughs> <laughs> Dell, you're being a baby. <laughs> uh, all right okay so now it's one more to go Todd you're yeah. up uh, with with Oliver looking good it's like okay thank you here you, you take a seat uh, and walks over to Desmond like, okay th thank you for the help I I'm ready here This goes. Ooh, ooh. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Same thing happened, or or you try and you, absolutely you can, or you can make it so uh, maybe it's a short duration. I, yeah, I, I like something else. Magic draws un un unwelcome attention, maybe. Like as I'm finishing him up, the nurse walks in or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Does it make sense? Because they were, she was sent to go get breakfast anyway. She'd be returning roughly around this time by this point. Okay.
not necessarily do you have to yeah believe me if you think there's things you're ashamed of <laughs> well maybe maybe at some point you could actually tell me i mean it's not I mean. the worst I, I doubt you've done anything worse than I have. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> but try, please, I would appreciate if you didn't lie every couple of seconds, or at the very least, warn me beforehand. It kind of goes I'd against like the to line. think I can trust... I'd like to think I can at least trust family. <laughs> wow. You and I live very different lives. <laughs> Believe me, I do not say that lightly. Which I will explain later. All right. This is what we need to do right now. So, Todd went out cut that motherfucking ghoul's finger off with a silver scalpel and it sizzled a little bit. That means we better go get silver. We better pile up silver as much as we can. Well, hand Della silver scalpel. Alright. Yeah, I take it. <laughs> did, I, did I get two or three? I don't even remember how many I got. You scrounged up what you could. So you have um, maybe a couple of those. So the scalpels, though, that's surgical steel, but you found some silver Yep. Um, because of the colloidal silver, et cetera. So um, they're, they're Why... treated for that. But what? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, Go ahead. It's okay. So, so uh... you have a, maybe a couple of useful implements like that that are cutting in. Um, but, and then you have some other, like, a blunt silver instrument. I feel really just, yeah. probably just kind of a, a, a rod of some sort. Okay. I'll keep the rod. And you probably don't scuffles. even know what it's used for. There. Yeah. It's got a knob on yeah. one end. I'll just whack him with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do I need to re-enchant my blade at this point? Um, yeah, that makes some sense. Yeah, some time has passed. It's a new day. With the dawn, you may have to... So I'm going to try and do that before thing. we leave the hospital. Okay. Just in case. Okay. And the nurse is very upset after seeing some weird stuff go on and people being healed. and So <laughs> she's run off and just trying to manage her own um, you know, nervous breakdown. And roll use so, magic, or? huh? Yeah, you can roll, roll use magic on on your sword. What are you trying to enchant it with, just to make it? Um... Oh, Dang uh... it! All right. So this is um, seems to me like we need to do a hard move against you would be to inflict hunger uh, on you again. So I would say you you delve back in you. After all that healing, after all that healing, you you um, you start to get tapped again. Dang it! I don't want to have to eat someone again. Not two people in a day. Just tell. Just be upfront with it. Uh, you know, to Dell, and he'll be fine with it. <laughs> Dell, I gotta go kill somebody else. All right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not about, it's, it's not about Dell being angry at me. It's about someone else dying. Oh, I already got oh. one life on my conscience oh. for this morning. I see. All right. Okay. I don't need anyway. another Irving on my life. Right. I don't need another Irving weighing on my soul. There's a nice, nice side effect. Everybody that you kill with your vampire powers. You learn their name. Like, you can't forget their name. 
Yep. You're a walking that's monument. A, that's a fun side effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just pile on the guilt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so you are now well out into the woods. You have found um, some snowmobiles to, that you liberated from the resort area where they've got some, you know, uh, they're closed because of the really bad snow conditions. But you guys managed to hop onto a couple of uh, snowmobiles. And uh, Desmond leads you back to where you can uh, see the facility. He points out from a safe distance, this is where the fence is. It's got a camera here and a camera here that I saw. I'm sure there's some other places where there's cameras. What's your thoughts on how you might get into a place like this? Is the fence electric? Is it uh, protected by barbed wire, both or? Yep. What? Yep. Okay. Razor wire. Razor uh, wire. Powered. Um, there is a, and it's, um, uh, not just electric fencing, but there's also um, other, like it's block fences and so on with razor wire on top. It's probably also electrified, so it'll cut and shock at the same time. Um, but it's it's got um, thick uh, concrete in the in the fence as well. So yeah. They don't yeah. want anybody going into this place. Right. Yeah, clearly you, you, you this is this is not a private residence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can, can we see anything, any vehicle, any tracks, trails, uh, evidence of people the, coming in and out? With the snowfall that has continued, you know, all night. Um, mm. and currently no snow falling right now. Uh, but there was a lot of snowfall. There was some bad weather overnight. You were in the middle of it. So uh, you're not surprised to find, you know, four to five foot s s snowfall powder with, you know, eight foot, 10 foot snow drifts and that sort of thing. So. All right. Anybody got any wire cutters with uh, uh, rubber protection on the handles so we don't get electrocuted? Not on me. I have some back at home. I think uh, we better. I might. What? What is my playbook move here? Pre preparedness. When I need something unusual or rare, roll plus sharp. There you go. Cool. <laughs> oh, okay. I happen to have one here in my bag. <laughs> Let's see. Or did I leave that on the plane? I definitely too? don't. You? Uh, <laughs> that was in the same bag as the silver okay. weapon. Uh, he, he, yeah, yeah. Silver bullets. You know, it's I know exactly where it is. Somewhere bad. <laughs> it's in that bag <laughs> with the silver bullets. But you get to mark XP. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh I think that, that gives me the my fifth. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. What are you gonna it, take for improvement? Uh I don't know. I'll have to You'll look at your playbook again and see what improvements you got to choose from and have a look while we continue. So okay. I think to get in and get past the security, you would need to do maybe um, a read a bad situation. Because that's a pretty bad situation. Trying to get through that. Okay, I'll take that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so you get to ask one of those questions, basically, or some variation of one of those kinds of questions. <clears throat> What's my best way in? All right. So you find a, a weakness in the, um, in the security where there is a certain part of a wall where um, it's kind of overgrown, and so it blocks some of the camera view. So you think you can get over, you are going to need to deal with <clears throat> um, that razor wire in some fashion. So, um, and the and 
the electrified razor wire. You're going to still need to figure that out somehow. Um, so... All right, but, I, I, but, but I, you could you I, you th you figured out you you can get in without being detected, mm -hmm. so long as you don't trip some other um, security yeah. measure that isn't a camera and isn't the razor wire uh, that's electric. Okay, yeah, I I point it out to everybody else and I say, um, there's a spot we can get in. And we won't be seen if we can get past it, but we got to deal with that electric wire. We got to deal with the razor wire. I think we should go back, go to Home Depot, get a big old industrial wire cutter, and uh, come back as soon as we can. Unless somebody's okay. got a better idea. All right, let's go. Right on. So nearest uh, Ace Hardware or Home Depot or you pack it whatever. back in and you it'll be closed, um, but that won't necessarily stop you guys from getting in. You've got someone who knows how to go in the back door quite easily, probably. Right, Ollie? Yeah, yeah. I'll okay. Guys. All right. You... So you get what you need and uh, and you come back. Now cutting the razor wire may interrupt the circuit. So what are you going to do about that? Oh, do we have to go back to get little power clippers? Oh, you haven't, you haven't left yet. We're, we're just talking. No, 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 no. Back and forth. Oh, yeah, crap. Back and forth. Back and forth. Yeah. Man, so three days later, you've got everything you need. <laughs> I think we thought of everything now. Um, no, so you could probably rig up some wires that you can connect to each side of the razor wire yeah. where you cut it so that it doesn't interrupt the circuit and cut your way through. So you're at, you can get all that stuff at the same hardware store. Yeah, including rubber, electrician, gloves, and all that stuff sure. to do it without yep. frying. Okay. So you steal what you need, um, unless you're going to leave some money on the counter with, you know, whatever, then no problem. No. You're going, no, didn't think so. So <laughs> you, uh, yeah. try and try. And. So you, um, no, I'm kidding. I, I, I'll do that after everybody. You make it over when no one else is looking, you leave, you know, a hundred bucks on the counter. Yeah. Okay. All right. That was your last, that was the last of your, your money until the next, uh, social security deposit. check. Yeah. Social security. With, yeah. VA, uh, whatever. <clears throat> right. All right, so you um, you get it, you get past the fence, and you are tracking across again, not very well tended territory, um, in post blizzard conditions. It's slow going. You're cold. You're sick and tired of uh, being out there, and you reach where the facility is, and this is more like um, what are those? Uh, buildings called that are kind of like half tubes. Those big long buildings that have like they're just like rounded and they're oh, yeah yeah concrete bunker like things right. And so uh, you find one of those. There's a name for those. I forget what they're called. But anyway, <clears throat> you find something like that and you you manage to go to the uh, the door that that leads into it and. Uh, it has obviously some security that needs to be foiled there. Oliver, you're going to need to act under pressure to get in through sure. this one. This one's a tough one, unless somebody else has a better idea. I'll take care of it. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> you will take care of it. I'm, I'm cool. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so you get the door open and then the door plate like you're standing there holding the door open and the door plate suddenly goes and, and it, you didn't expect that There's something something just happened like maybe um you, you will not enter unnoticed there's um there's a camera on the other side of the door 
and uh, you managed to look right at it. It was hidden back around. You couldn't have seen it. And you just walked right in, and there it's it's there, and it goes, it's like looking right at you. It's looking at you. It's got a red light on it. Uh, it's an active uh, surveillance. I'll wave. <laughs> All right. <coughs> oh, shit. Okay, so you what are you gonna do once you're not, you're inside now? What is it you wanna you wanna do? Is this just Oliver or the rest of us? No, all of you. Yeah. No, no oh, he's, okay. he's yeah, unlocked right. the door for you and held it for you while you walked in. And as he goes in, the 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 lock that he just foiled made some weird yep uh, electronic sound and kind of flickered or something. He's like, uh oh, and that's when he looked up and he saw the camera yep. that was kind of out of out of everyone's vision my, my bad guys how high up is this camera uh it's just up at the ceiling so it's you know uh 10 feet like are there a lot of cameras probably. in here in the corridor well, maybe this it's... Is a, yeah in this corridor it looks like there's one here and then there's maybe one further down uh toward the other end where there's a set of doors not unlike this this hospital hallway right mm. What what um what type of material is or I mean is is this like a silver, uh, like steel wall, steel steel like wall that. steel floor things like that? No, it's concrete. It's concrete. Okay. Yep. How about the top? Is are there like gas pipes and things like that? Like you would yes. normally see in yeah. an industrial facility? Yeah. Shit. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah. All right, then uh, I, th I think we have to, um, yeah, just keep going. Yep. <clears throat> Great. All right, so you guys know that you, you someone knows you're there. So you, you probably pick up the Maybe. pace a little bit trying to figure out. Yeah. Um, if, if they're but, watching the security cameras, yeah. But the place or seems if to be quiet. Okay. Deathly quiet. There isn't any uh, other sounds. There's no other sounds. Nothing else going on here. Um, so you slowly let the door close and you uh, let it click. Yeah. Can I can I roll an investigative mystery to figure sure. out? Um, yeah, what's being concealed here? All right. Let me do that. Okay. Yeah. So. Hold two, one hold can be okay. So I get two questions, and I want to say, I want to ask, what is being concealed here, and what happened here? Yeah, okay. like what's what's going on here? What can I see that from this? From what you can see here, this appears to be an abandoned, maybe like a, a military outpost. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it was used for training or something it seems pretty innocuous for you know a government facility from being military but um what you can tell is that this is the front right that this is where you're at right now is yeah. not at all related to what's really going on here. that clearly there's active security there's active so it must be underground okay yeah, your guess is it's probably an elevator at the end of this hall, and that's probably going to go down, if not yeah. hundreds of feet, at least several stories worth of down, to get to whatever's really down. So, you okay. flashbacks of like Resident Evil is coming to mind. Mm. All right, yeah, umbrella then... corp kind of stuff. Keep going. Oh, by the way, when I see gas pipes, can you, uh, what, what type of gases are going? It through? could be water pipes. It could, there are definitely some they're, piping. It could just be some, uh, they're conduit. usually labeled. Could be conduit. It, these aren't, these are just painted, uh, um, okay. kind of just to match all the stuff. Hmm. Again, your impression is if that is, it's old, um, and just been painted to, to keep it up. 
So it looks okay. it could be just cast iron, it could be water pipes, could be you know, probably not ventilation, it's not square or anything like that. So um it's probably just water pipes, maybe electrical conduit. That's what it is. Okay. Let's go find an elevator some way down. All right. Everything's going to be What's underground. Your other question? Did you already ask the question? What happened here? Um, yeah, I think that kind of fits in. And so what happened here is um, this was at some point uh, just used as kind of conduit sort of, you know, I mean, not conduit. What am I saying? Uh, kind of just a, a, a innocuous office area for the military base um, or whatever. So it, it could have even been like um, for mountain training, you know what I mean? Where they have like mountain mm -hmm. gear and they just train so but that's probably been 50 years ago. So what happened here is that you think it's been renovated. You think that there's something that's been added since and uh, underground. All right. Yep. For all we, you know, we, this could be, this even could be a, a facade for a deep underground military base. You know about them. So. All right. So I think we just, uh, yeah, keep going until we find an elevator or a staircase going down. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So if it's a dumb, then it definitely won't have a staircase. Um, when you get to the elevator, you figure this probably isn't an elevator shaft that goes down a mile, um, but definitely goes underground several, maybe 100 or 200 feet. Mm -hmm. right? okay. All right, so you do find the elevator. It is a industrial-like grade military grade elevator it does have a security panel on it that is modern just like the one that was on the front door so oliver could probably foil that one as well so i would see want to see another act under pressure to see if you sure. could get that elevator working yeah. I'll walk up are you going to do stuff. anything about the camera that's there what do you want to do about that I, yeah there will be a camera on the elevator Like outside the elevator, aiming at the elevator, like who's yeah. going into the, who's at the security pad, that kind of camera. Yeah. Yeah. What do I want to do the camera? Just turn it off. I mean, they already saw us come in. Yeah, they saw you come in. Do you care? Well, I think the question is, you know, how far away was that camera to our faces? What's the likelihood? Um, probably should look at you know if if this is renovated what, what's the definition of these cameras or if they are cameras that have been around for like 10 20 years no, then this all looks current it's okay the so yeah. they then it's probably useless to do anything at this point because the whatever was caught on the way in yeah. that probably has high resolution images of us anyway Facial recognition software getting. Yeah, it's gonna be a shame us. for you guys. Well, maybe not. Maybe not all of us. <laughs> Ooh, Desmond. okay. Well, <laughs> okay. You get the elevator doors to open. There you um, go. Yep. So this elevator could hold, you know, fifteen people. Pretty big elevator. I go in. Should we make a plan for when the door opens at the bottom and there's like a bunch of guys with machine guns? <laughs> Draw my sword, I guess. Yeah. So this elevator also is not like, you know, a retail elevator. So it's definitely military. So it's mostly just kind of um, steel. I'm imagining kind of like a steel um, see-through like like a mesh kind of, you know, with a, like a, cage, like a cage, more like a cage 
Yeah, but m more modern than that, but definitely yeah. industrial level stuff. And, is there dust? Um, is there dust anywhere? Is there dust on the ground or? I'll, I'll not investigate like it. for that. Yeah, go ahead, because you might want to. You might be yes. able to get some more information. I yeah. I would say that probably not dust dust like, like, oh, it's an old abandoned place. So there you go. Hey, there we go. So okay, you get to hold two. What questions would you like? Yeah. To know? Uh. So. What uh, what what happened here? Has there been stuff going on? Has the dust moved around? Uh, what... Yeah, you find you find some black icor nope. um, on the like the elevator itself. The bottom is also cage like, right? So you can see down into nothingness way down below. Um, but you see that there was apparently some dripping, right? So this could be where the wounded ghoul had come from. Mm. And uh, what sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? You still have the, uh, the investigating. You still have the finger, so you should be able to match up um, if this uh, black guy core. Uh, it, it aligns with the um, whatever liquid residue is left in the the finger, the severed finger. Yeah, yeah. Is is this the the same sort of uh, residue that you know I see on the finger? Not at all. Yeah. So the finger was taken from someone who still looked human, mm -hmm. but was changing like a chain the ghoul you fought uh not definitely monstrous definitely uh and that's where the black you guys have you laid into him and it, uh, hit him a couple of times with things guns and whatnot and he definitely was had this black like all of his internal liquids had just gone black and, and yeah you know decayed okay so we know that we're the kid from the hospital you just spoke with him the day the night before whatever you know hours before yeah, yeah. so, so by we comparison are... the the black thing you fought in the the black icor that came from the creature that you fought in the mine would be 30 years old dead right yeah, yeah. uh okay and so and this looks like that that icor as well yeah it's yeah and it's got this rancid then, smell to it like yeah. you dip down you're like okay yeah i'll 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 scoop some up with with his finger you can just yeah you can kind of just touch it and it just yeah. sticks to you a little bit no I'll, I'll use his finger to do it instead of oh mine. his finger oh <laughs> not yours yeah gotcha <laughs> yep yeah okay okay is there a camera in the elevator yes yes there is uh is there a hatch in the ceiling of the elevator no it's a cage so it's almost like a construction elevator. Think of like a heavy duty construction elevator. Like okay. in a building that they're still building. What are the uh elevator buttons buttons? Oh, yeah. There there is just one button. It just goes down <laughs> or up. <laughs> Start and stop. Yeah. Doom. Certain right. doom. <laughs> I'm uh gonna get get out my cell phone and start uh, recording everything. Okay. All right. So the elevator and it begins to go down. And um, at the bottom, the doors open and there is a hallway, um, not unlike the hallway you just came out of to get into the elevator 
This one is similar, um, but it does have, um, it goes left and right immediately outside the elevator and then also straight ahead. So you've got a couple different directions. It has this very cold um, incandescent or what a fluorescent lighting, not incandescent, that's the wrong kind. The cold fluorescent lighting panels in the ceiling, and um, and very sterile kind of look to it. Again, all concrete. And there Much are no so. armed guards. <laughs> it's empty. There's nobody there. Can I step out into the hall and breathe heavily? Is it cold <laughs> down here? <laughs> it is cold. Yeah, it is cold. Uh, cold enough for it my could air be breath release. Because you went or... like 150 feet down. Yeah. But yeah, it's cold. But like, like, okay. Mm. Is it normal cold or is it Wendigo cold? <laughs> mm. Hard to say. It just seems kind of normal cold right now. Cold like a damp cave or cold like a blizzard? Cold like 150 feet underground in the mid dead of winter. Cold. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what this place is. I think we should have. There should be guards on us by now. Let's keep walking. Place. Let's keep checking it out. I'm just saying. I just Should march forward. Okay. Head on the swivel. Yeah, I'm just saying. That is more concerning to me. <laughs> there isn't the guy. Guy. There isn't anyone. <laughs> there are cameras, but no one here. Yes. I would almost I would almost expect them to be there to be no one here if uh, this creature is using it as its home. Do you think the, the government actually built this for the Wendigo? <laughs> I bet they wanted to make Wendigos so that they could use war or something like that. And then, like always happens, their weapon turned against them. Yeah. That's why all the cards are dead. Do you have a preference for which direction you want to go? Whichever way feels the warmest. Are there signs anywhere? No. There are no, like, signs that, uh, you know, like... Um, no guests, labels on doors? The, the labs are this way, and the, you know, body parts are over here. No, nothing like that. No. Let's go north. <laughs> Which way, Which way is that? <laughs> <laughs> Back Back when I was in a foster home, we used to play D and D. We would always go right. <laughs> Why? Right. What yes. D and D? Oh, I'm not. You missed a There's... lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's not where I'm going to start explaining things to you. There's so many better things than that. <laughs> <laughs> like cameras. Star Wars. All right, let's go this way. <laughs> we played Monster of the Week. And then suddenly this turns into a meta of a meta, a meta of a meta. Right. Uh, okay, so um, why don't one of you read a bad situation and see if you yeah. can um, not walk yourself into um, immediate doom and despair? Who wants to roll that? Uh, my sharpness is pretty high, so I can do it. Yeah, you're probably good at reading a bad situation also. Uh, Enough. Could be worse. Okay. okay. Yeah, so... Um, kind of a what's my best way in kind of thing? Yeah, what's my best way in? Okay. So you're thinking that probably straight ahead will be your best way in, in that it's probably, like the way a lot of government facilities are laid out, blah, 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 you know, the most direct route, the other sides are often go to 
you know, tertiary offices or storage or things like that. But um, the the meaty stuff is usually directly in, and it's in the center of whatever. So if you're not currently in the center, if you're at the outside, there's a big assumption there that mm-hmm. you're on the outside of it going in, then it's in the center. Besides, when you played Half-Life, it was always straight ahead. <laughs> Still never played any video games. Okay, right. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right, so... Not um, one. So, I'm assuming you're going to head... Like you would st- like Half-Life. Straight ahead. Yep, the, straight ahead. Um, so then what happens is as you're going down, um, the lights begin to flicker. And you hear the... You didn't notice it before, but you hear the ventilation like fans or whatever like it the the place gets even quieter it was like there was this subtle white noise right that you didn't notice and it just went and it kind of got quieter um and more still and the lights Mm -hmm. begin to flicker like maybe power is being interrupted and it's trying to kick over to generators that sort of thing Mm -hmm. Is quiet, too quiet. I know the guards are dead. I said that. <laughs> All right. So as you continue down this hallway, uh, to the right there are some the, the the concrete wall itself gives way to embedded windows in the concrete wall, and those windows that are along the side lead you know give you some vision into a an entry area where there's a door further down that opens to this entry area and then another set of doors and those doors are crooked the ones that go into whatever the lab is or whatever that's on the other side and they're crooked because they normally would um but there's a problem with the hinges on one of the doors looks like it was forced open and instead of sliding open one was pushed right um and so it's crooked and doesn't uh, so that's kind of stuck um with the door being askew and kind of halfway off of its you know bent out of the way um at that point the lights in the main hall give out and leaving the hall dark but the lights from the lab on the other side of this um, extra area here it looks like it's maybe a biocontainment area where you might put your bunny suit on or take it off or that sort of right so it's like a changing area getting ready to go into the other area so um, you do see light coming into the hallway from a little bit further down beyond the windows where obviously the door there is open. Head over to the light. Okay. Yeah. Right, so you, you guys walk in there and um, sure enough, there's some benches and some boots and some th- you know, uh, different kinds of uh, uh, outerwear, like kind of like a bunny suit or hazmat kind of gear that's on pegs and some of it's on the ground and kind of been um, muddled around with Um, and you head over across that hallway back across where those windows are that you were just looking through to the door that's broken into the lab and what you see is uh, now you can kind of see into the lab here and there is there are computers and uh, there are some labs there's some other like containment areas where it looks like Maybe there's some things that get stored in there, or it does have this medical kind of research lab look about it all. Just imagine in your mind what that might look like with mostly white. There is some lots of stainless steel. There are um, lights that can be moved to shine on things um, that are kind of parabolic in nature and um, other things, and there's gear and there's Um, wires and conduit going across the ceiling and around that's keeping the 
cables off the ground, but there are still some cables that are on the ground that are plugging into things, connecting equipment together. The equipment in this room does look like um, uh, some medical in nature, just other scientific, diagnostic in nature, etc. And so you see this kind of layout. So imagine just um, a lab environment where there are some stainless steel tables that are almost like tubs, like maybe even where an autopsy might be performed, you know, so it's got a place where it drains and all that kind of thing. Um, and the room itself, it begins to also have sections of it that are kind of flickering with the light. So the light is sketchy here and there as well. Uh, and it's almost like it's on emergency lighting, which is enough to illuminate the room far better than the hallway that you came out of. But it definitely has. Now, there is, um, there are some monitors that are up, and um, a couple of them are broken, like they've been smashed. Um, one of them does still have some, like, telemetry-looking stuff going along. It's like scrolling across the screen, not unlike maybe an EKG kind of thing where it's measuring, you know, and, but it doesn't go boop, 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 boop. It's not like that, but, I mean, it's similar. It's got some, some oscillating, um, you know, uh, diagram-looking things to it and so forth. Uh, looks like a sine wave, that kind of thing. Um, and some other data that looks more like uh, just different kinds of charts and diagrams, but they're, it looks live, like it's live data. And um, <clears throat> there are some computer-looking equipment. There's a lot of flashing lights on a rack full of things and such, and so that's still working. And um, there, there are carts on wheels. There are um, tanks that look like they might be oxygen tanks, but maybe they're something else. It's hard to hard to know the contents. There's no markings on them. Um, and what markings were there may have worn off or faded or something, if there was labels on them. Um, <clears throat> there are some dangling cables as well, so that there's some play and moving things around. Um, on one of the other computer screens, it looks like it's playing back some old video and the old video shows um, a woman um, in her probably late 40s early 50s um, wearing half uh, glasses like reading glasses with chains on them that go around to her white kind of lab coat you can just kind of see the top and she's talking about how you know subject 6352 has responded to the serum and appears to, um, after cardiac arrest, uh, has returned to normal sinus rhythm, blah, blah, you know, and she's going on about something like that. And, um, and then it glitches and it replays, you know, right? So it's kind of stuck in this weird loop. Um, You kind right. of walk in. You kind of walk in and look at this, and then um, from behind you, um, a large uh, metal cabinet um, is shoved in front of the door, and you see the Wendigo standing there, um, like he was waiting for you to come into the room, and now he has trapped you in the room with. I Shit. bring my sword up to the ready yep. and step in front of everyone else. I've got my scalpel ready and my gun. Del, <laughs> it's time for you to end with the rest of this. I believe you are responsible for some of this. I am responsible for shit. And the only thing ending here, motherfucker, is you. You know about this. No one. I don't no know one. shit. No one is innocent. All right. Certainly not you, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. All right. He looks, he gets ready to, like he's getting ready just to pounce. He's kind of 
crouches down a little bit like he's getting ready to jump. Who's going to make the first move? Uh, I will. As soon Desmond, as, you're up front. As soon as I see down? him, yeah. As soon as I see him, uh, basically tense things to pounce. Yep. I'm going to rush forward with my with my blade okay. and try to attack him. All right. Go for it. That would uh, be a definite kick some ass. Yep. So we're just going to use this hallway here just to kind of set relative positions. So we'll put you two up front and the other three of you, you get to go first. That's an 11. So he's going to take... Uh, the enchantment didn't work on my sword, right? Correct. Didn't get the effect. No. So. That was just a All miss. Right. Okay. So, <clears throat> All right. Uh, so what harm do you do? He's going to... He's going to take uh, three harm, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the extra effect of uh, gain the advantage and give plus one to whoever goes after me. Okay. All right. So whoever's going to make the next action, they can have plus one against the against the Wendigo. Who's going next? Uh, does, he, does he do any harm to me from that? Oh, yeah, actually, he is, because you, you didn't... No, nope, you're absolutely right. So uh, he's going to come uh, across the side with his claws. That's going to do two harm. So I think you can shrug off one of those, right? Yeah, so I just take one harm? Yep, one harm. All right. As it just cuts, cuts a little bit across... All right, who's next? I'm just yeah. holding out the scalpel <laughs> in case this thing attacks me, that it, I have some opportunity to stab it, but I'm not going to actively do anything at this moment. Okay. All right. I'll attack it if no one else is going to. All right. So yeah, you're going to take Todd the Todd was sort of waiting on, Dar on Dill, thinking, like, this thing's been talking to him. <laughs> what's, what's he doing? And so he holds, but all of you jump just in. His, ah! You're locked in here with us! We're not locked in here with you! And I'll right. whack him with my silver club. Alright, so you run up and you hit him with the, your little silver, silver rod. rod. Stick. Yeah. yeah. Alright. I get a plus one. You do. Yep. So Dell set up a yeah, good it's... position. So yeah, that's good. Uh, that's actually a, a seven. It, so that's yes. actually yeah, you a... Didn't miss. Thanks for that. That's not Thanks a for that plus one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're good. <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's not. But you also don't get the experience, so no. no. you miss. But <clears throat> you will do harm, so that will be two harm that you're going to do to him. Can I? Because it's a silver someone? thing. Since he basically ran up next to me, can I use protect someone? Yeah, you want to try to go ahead. Yep, yep, you can do that to try to keep him from taking harm back. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Because that's what will happen. All right. Ooh. Uh, so that's a seven. Oh, okay. I protect them okay, but I suffer some or all the harm they were going to get. Right. So another two harm to you. You'll dodge in the way and um, kind of you kind of crowd him out. After he hits, you you get in the way, and so you're going to take the hit from that. So that's uh, two One harm harm's... again, so you'll take another harm, right? Okay. Yep. All right, so, Todd, you've seen that go on, and the the um, the Wendigo, he actually, um, you can, what you see is kind of almost like spidering along the wall behind him is some frost, and it's starting to grow around him guys um, can see that he's definitely making a move in the w w winter wonderland department. Mm -hmm. Todd, what do you do? I've been up close with this thing before yeah. and th that is where I'm going to go back to. So I don't Think there's a reason I don't have the gun. I'll 
draw that again. Yeah. I've got the yeah. scalpel You're in the back. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I will strafe to the side uh, and get a, a clear shot away from the other folks mm -hmm. that okay. are going at it. Right. All right. So you go, dang, 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 dang. All right. So you start yeah. popping off some bullets at the Wendigo, who is clearly starting to ramp up some cold magic of some sort. Okay. So I think that is a seven, and that is going to get you what you're looking for. So you're going to inflict harm. How much does your gun do in harm? Oh, uh, what does gun do? Equipment. Here we go. Three. Three. All right, so you, you and you can see just some of that black icor blast out and spray up on the wall where this snowflaking frost has been spreading um, as you hit him. He, however, um, is going to um, shoot back at you and is going to inflict some harm on you as well. You're going to take two harm from um, icicle like cold that's coming at you and just, just starts to rip into and you with really cold ice. Is it possible to try and protect him as well or no? Uh, I I think the f that he's already over the, um I did strafe further away to avoid everyone. No, I think that would be yeah, to, yeah. And to, I'm up close and personal with the with the right. ghoul. Yeah, so, so I he's gonna and, like throw off his aim or something. Uh, when you when you worked your way in between um, Oliver, he ju he juked the other way, and that's partly how he ended up getting caught. So he actually is um, moving away from you in this whole fluid motion, and okay. he shoots out some of that uh, harm at you, Todd. All right, Dell, you see what's going on. The other yep. two have been kind of pushed off to the side. They're more closer to that giant metal cabinet that's been pushed in front of your only exit that you know of out of this room. Mm -hmm. The ghoul Wendigo itself is ramping up some cold magic and fired some off at Todd, who is unloading his weapon into it. What do you do? You mentioned before that there's some canisters of gases and things like that. Yeah, some metal. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything look remote, remotely explosive that's near the ghoul? hard to say you don't <laughs> notice uh, in your initial view yep. of these objects or even now you don't really see any of that um the hazard symbols that say that's flammable but for all you know this is what was uh, holding whatever the serum was they were talking about or whatever um or it's nothing maybe it's just inert gas that's not explosive in any way who knows uh, but you you could if it's under pressure, maybe, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, people use these like torpedoes. You can knock the, you know, the top off of it. If it's under pressure, that well, might I, be I, enough to shoot it across the room at the, the ghoul. That would be a tough thing to aim, but there's something. I'll try that. So you're saying act under pressure? Uh, yeah, I think that would be. And you're, you're, yeah, so a miss could could um, mean that you wasted your time trying to knock the top off this thing after you toppled sure. it, or it could be worse. Maybe it'll be that you cause it to actually explode or something and not, okay. not do what you want it. You're trying to shoot it across, at aim it at the Wendigo or somewhere over there, hopefully to, to do something. So a partial success might be you. You get it over there, but it doesn't really hit him. It uh, causes maybe just enough distraction that Todd does not, you know, has a, a way to move out of the way or something. Okay. Or, you know, something like that. So go ahead and give it a roll. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. Partial success. So indeed, you, um, it's, it's very weak. It, it wasn't much, um, like you were expecting some really cool Hollywood you know, smack off the top and have it go and shoot over there like a, like one of those uh, rockets or something. And and it just it wasn't really that. There definitely was pressure, and so some of that worked. You knocked the nozzle off of it, and it did go over there. But it just 
wasn't very much, and it was some kind of other, maybe it was, you know, some other uh, not flammable gas of any kind. And so it kind of pushed over there and just started rolling on its side. And the ghoul leaped up uh, off uh, over the top. But it did put him away from not um, being able to attack just now. Okay. So, Desmond, um, this will give you a chance to take an action. What would you like to do? I'm going to uh, run up to him again. Okay. And attack him with my sword. All right. All right, so you run up and take another slicey slice and dice, stab and jab. Let's see that uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe or what? Well, wrong game. It's another 11. Kick some ass. All right, so that's great. So... That's uh, three harm and... Huh? Uh, I think I will inflict terrible harm with this one. So he'll okay. take a total of four. All right, so you're going to take back... Um, to harm yourself as he as, yeah, as he wrestles with you you slice a little bit and he just comes at you and uh, catches your sword in an awkward position after you've hit him he then gets a chance to come back and um, slice at you again so you'll take a couple more harm are you yeah. at three now is that where you're at yeah so one more harm and I go unstable you start going unstable yep so he's yep. He's slicing away at you. He's getting a piece. All right. And I'm going to give him one more. Okay. All right. Uh, now, Oliver, Desmond has un unpinned you from where he had gotten in the way to kind of protect you from taking damage. Yeah. The ghoul has kind of uh, got higher ground and using that to his advantage to hit Desmond back. But Desmond got a nice, nice shot in there. Really good uh, shot. Uh, but uh, Todd is bringing his gun to bear, and Dell is trying to figure out what else he can do from where he's at across the room a little bit. What do you do? So how high up is he? Can I reach him with my... He's just on a table, basically. All right. He's... Yeah. Yeah, then I'm just going to run up and try and smash him in the knee. Okay. Uh, hopefully they knock him over. So yep. don't really expect that to happen. All right. Ah! So... All right, so let's do that. All right, so in this case, you're going to gain an experience point, and you're going to take... Uh, he actually uh, is going to just dive right up on top of you. you. You come at him, you're screaming, and so that gave him lots of warning. He braces, and he just comes right at you, and so you don't even get a chance to get a full swing in before he's all over you. And um, he is going to bite you, so that's three harm for that bite. You feel strange. You feel like um, there was more to the bite. It's this unusual warmth um, that begins just like, almost like it got splashed on you and it kind of soaks into your clothes. But it's just his bite on your shoulder. He just like goes right for your shoulder. And he bites you right on the, right on the cuff of your shoulder. And so it begins to feel warm, like like maybe your blood is just draining all over. But, but there's no, as you're, you're trying to fight with him, and he's just like gnawing at you, um, you realize that something else is happening. You're getting something else. You can't, your arm is start to, starting to feel weird. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, Todd... Uh, <laughs> He's on the other side of the table from Desmond now, and he's got Oliver on the ground, and he's bit into him, and is kind of just th thrashing him a little bit like a dog with a toy. What do yeah. you do? This this is too familiar. Uh, it's happening I'm gonna, again. Yeah. I'm going to run up and kick him in the face again. All right. Like the, okay. the, there are no stairs here, but that's that's what's got to happen. Okay. All right, let's see if you see what you can do. Let's try and kick some ass. Literally kick some face. Yes. Ah. All right, well, you get an XP, so that's good. Okay. But unfortunately, what happens is um, 
he actually grabs your foot and throws you into Desmond. He like throws you up over the table over at Desmond. And so uh, Desmond, you, uh, I want you to um, act under pressure to not get nailed by a flying librarian. <laughs> nope. No. All right, so you topple into a pile of skin and bones together. Um, you are just a big heap of two humans. Um, so you you are actually, uh, I'm going to move you over here. And here you two are just tied up together. And he's not biting into you right now, but he looks over at Dell. He sees you're on the ground. You're good. He's got you. And he looks yep. over at Dell and prepares to uh, begin to move. He starts to move toward Dell. Dell, he's like running towards you. He's on like all fours, just pouncing yep. toward you. What do you do? Well, I've got my silver scalpel. I'll actually run up to meet him. And I am, uh, by the way, uh, I'm prepared to use some luck. Um, I can use luck, right? Uh, yeah, I think Get luck a 12. comes to play when, yeah, you can just ha have an automatic 12. Yep. yep. Uh, so you can try let, to roll let me a see 12 what I yourself. Do. Yeah. yeah, and then you can just make it a 12 with by using luck. Yeah. Yep, so with the scalpel, I'm going to try to, like, basically um, stab him in the eyeball. Okay, so as a, um, as just a reminder, luck doesn't heal back. Luck is gone, and it's gone for good when you spend yeah, it. Yeah, but I think, unfortunately, this is, uh, this is a case where it's actually worthwhile. Because my kick, get... uh, Sorry, my, my toughness is really awful. It's good. It's a minus one. So if okay. I do kick some yeah. ass with something like this, then um, I'm probably going to have to use some luck. But okay. I'm willing to do well, it. You, I don't know if you have to use it right now. You, you can roll to see if you need to roll. use it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You roll yeah. your kick some ass and see. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you need yeah. Yeah. Do you need yep. it? <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking so luck, luck it is. Yeah. All right. So it's uh, as if you rolled a 12. Yes. So I wonder if I can. I think I can. There was a way to, to, to change it back. Oh, maybe. maybe not. Maybe not. But there was. Okay. So, um, so with a twelve, you um, get just like um, I'm going to scroll up to reference the eleven that uh, Desmond got earlier. It says here, um, you get to choose an extra effect. So you're going to do harm, which is going to be three harm with your silver scalpel mm -hmm. and you get an extra effect so if you want to inflict terrible harm that'll be four harm um you can choose to suffer less harm and subtract one from whatever yeah he deals so you can you. protect yourself a little bit take less mm -hmm. damage from him otherwise he has a chance to be doing damage to you as well what do you want to do yeah you could also gain the advantage give yourself a plus one or someone else a plus one forward or you yeah, i'll give myself a plus one and um actually i'm going to just try to maximize damage here okay all right so that'll be four harm all together all right so um he comes at you and he's running on all fours and you just like ah, you just go right for him you're aiming the scalpel you've got it um like this kind of style right sticking out yep. the bottom yeah. of the hand. And and you're ready just to grab him and take him, and he he dives at you, and you you, you like sacrifice by letting him just roll right into you, and you stab him, and you get him right in the eye with I don't know some kind. The gods were smiling on you today with some crazy turn of luck. You managed to put that scalpel directly into his eye, and um, he actually screams and shakes and you feel like sizzling and there's like some smoke and steam coming out of his eye where you're still holding you're trying to just bury this scalp yep, into to his head shove it in as much as possible and yeah you want to get into the center of the brain all that kind of stuff if you can and and it turns out that he um he actually uh 
is just he begins to spasm and shake and um and then he just goes completely limp and um seems to be dead like you've you've nailed him right in the brain with your silver scalpel oh then i'm not going to give up i'm going to i'm going to start um yeah uh pull it out and put it back in again pick a new holes start start severing the neck whatever i can okay. do all right yeah. yeah so you pull it out and it's got black grossness all over it but it's it's actually sizzling all that black stuff is yep. just is just the burning away uh, with the silver and because there's some kind of so silver and you know this because you've dealt with uh, homeopathic remedies you understand you don't want to do the prescription, like big pharma route, all this kind of stuff with anything you've had to do. And so right. you know that silver has anti-fungal, antibacterial, all these properties of like anti-disease. And this goes even way back in the medieval days when um, people would get sick during the plague eating off of their wood plates with their wood spoons but the rich people didn't get sick nearly as often because they ate off the silver. And Silverware. so, yeah. So, you know, that there's something about the disease, the, the grossness or whatever, of what is inside this Wendigo, the, this, this, uh, uh, decayed human flesh, this gross, whatever, um, just all the morbidity. And so and you rip it out and you start cutting across his throat and you're trying to saw off it. And it just is spilling out and burning. And it's not hot to you, but it's burning under the silver as you're starting to uh, cut through the neck and so on. Clearly, this ghoul was weakened by Desmond's attack, by the bullet wounds that it has. And you dealt the death blow to this ghoul as uh, you stuck it right in as he attacked you. So you managed to accomplish exactly what you set out to do. You behead the ghoul. It, uh, it's not easy. It's, it's old, leathery flesh, even behind the flesh. And there's hard organs and all that kind of... Just This creature has been dead, but also alive um, and feeding off of human flesh for quite some time. So uh, you dig through. As you do that, you notice that he has, um, it has a tattoo on its neck. And it matches the tattoo of the 112th whatever, right, uh, from Desert Storm. And it was a group of uh, Green Berets. That went in so not your division not specifically what you were involved in but they were known to be some of the toughest badasses that got sent into shock and awe and were you know in the first stages of the war and many of them um went mia during that time it was assumed that they were just uh killed um during all that chaos and mayhem during the initial part of the Okay. I go, oh shit. Who's got a camera on their phone? Take a take a photo of this, this tattoo right here. That's probably all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I might, Listen. but, uh, <laughs> you know, Desmond and I are. Yeah, your uh, camera's still I, recording. Off. Yeah, my camera was recording. I just uh, Oliver's camera has been recording the whole time. It, it's <laughs> it's been shit recording, but yeah. it's not going to win any Oscars. But uh, <laughs> most of the time, it wasn't even aiming at anything because he was running yeah. around like a madman with a silver Rod. stick. Yeah. So, um, did I see uh, Oliver? get bit on the shoulder yeah oliver um you can't even feel your arm right now like you're trying to make it um pick up the camera you were just instinctively trying to because it's the arm that you didn't have your big metal rod in and instead uh this arm it, it like 
you thought that you reached over to grab your camera, which you saw laying face down over there, with camera not pointing at anything useful. And you went to go grab it, but nothing on your left side is really moving very well, especially your arm. Can I attempt to uh, use magic to cure a disease or neutralize a poison? Yeah. Oh, well, please. Okay. Well, that's a portion yeah. better than nothing. That's gonna, that is going to make you much more hungry. So you're, you're headed back to where hey, you it, were. It's worth it. In your it's hunger. Worth. But you start to feel your arm your arm again. You're like, oh, man. It's almost like it's just pins and needles. Like it's been a, a sleep and it really hurts. And but, you do uh, see Desmond's eyes go back to a, a very pale color. As he finishes up the healing. Okay. And and at this point, um, there is some um, strange... Like, one of the cameras moves and aims down at what you're doing there. And then all of a sudden, um, there are some red flashing lights from somewhere, you know, in the ceiling, in the equipment and the equipment begins to sizzle and smoke. The monitor with the video that was playing goes dark. All the monitors go dark. They begin to spark. Um, and uh, what you find happening here is some kind of remote command was issued to destroy all the data in this room and whatever was going on here. So what you have are your clues that you have now, and that's it. So you don't know exactly what this place is used for, um, but it is, um, it's not going to uh, be very fruitful to be digging around for any more information. It looks like what was here has been destroyed. Did we at um, least get any kind of, like, insignia or... A name for the place? Uh, it didn't have any markings, um, except for um, FDA. One, of the, <laughs> one of the symbols that was on the screen before it went dark looked kind of like it was reminiscent of a Nazi symbol. Not the broken, not the iron, the broken cross, but that was part of it. Like. It was more like a black eagle um, with a triangle kind of symmetry to it and so forth. It looked like it was there was a head and then the eagle wings were out. And then there was in one hand, there was like the, the, the swastika. And in the other, it looked like maybe it was carrying something else. It could have been a branch or uh, a stick or something. It was hard to say what. Isn't that and Pfizer's then, uh, logo? That went all. <laughs> that went all dark. Could could be. So and then it went dark after that. Okay. Would I have recognized that symbol at all? Um. Yeah, maybe. Um. It you it looks similar. Something. What's that? You want me to roll sharp or something? See if I remember. Um, Yeah, let's. That sounds fine. Do that, and I'll give you some more information aside from you having to go figure it out. That's uh, eighteen. Sorry, eight. My mistake. Okay. My, I don't know why I said that. No worries. All right. So, um, <laughs> with that, you see, um, in your mind, you can see that some of your superiors or people who brought you into your clan um, one of them had something similar tattooed like above his heart or maybe where his heart used to be I don't know and um, it was very similar to that it was more stylized or just older looking like this is maybe a more modern view of it but then that was you know in the 
late 1700s, early 1800s, right? Something like that. And more like the late, late, late 1800s. Okay. Yeah. So still, you know, Victorian era kind of stuff. And so he, um, uh, and you missed all those wonderful world wars. So, yeah. so it looks like it could have been related to that. You'll need to dig in a little bit more and see what you can find. But definitely, um, you, it, it actually brings up a memory that you seem to have forgotten. And it, uh, it's just one word. Erlauschtegeist. Do I know what it means? You. But I. You, but I've you heard the word before. You, Erlauschtegeist. You, you, you have associated it to something like the Earl King. Erlauschtegeist. And that is where we will end for tonight. Cool. You right. can now run your end of session. Move. Okie dokie. Uh, Do we conclude the current? Like, this is going the current to end. Mystery? Yeah, this does. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The current mystery uh, is done. Do we done. save someone from certain death or worse? I think I saved. A couple uh, of times Oliver over. From, yep. From prison. Yep. I saved, <laughs> saved a lot of you. Saved me as well, yep. Yeah. And I, I just purged Oliver from some sort of poison that was in that was in the bite. I was gonna be a Wendigo. Uh, it was gonna be awesome. I was gonna power up. Become a fellow monstrous. <laughs> yeah. I think we uh, learned some be, something new yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> And we definitely learned something new and uh, important about one of the hunters, which is you, uh, Desmond. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think we got four here. <laughs> More to learn about. All right. So yeah. looks like you're going to get two XP each, and this will right. include the mystery. So I, I've got another. I've got another improvement. See, you Ooh. fail enough, and then solve the mystery at the end, and you get to level up. It's awesome. Yeah, I think I'm going to purchase a layer. A lair, yeah. Yeah, one right. of my monstrous moves allows me to pick a haven from the ex, from the expert uh, book yep. and add two tags to it. So you have a haven okay. too. So I have a double haven. Yeah, I'm imagining <laughs> it being like my my mansion in Louisiana. Right, I like it. Cool. Did any of you with your two XP get to level up too? Nope. One away. Yeah, I, I got to level up. Actually, I got to level up last session, but I was a little bit, uh, I missed the opportunity to do anything with it. So now um, I didn't get to two levels up, but I'm trying to figure out, um, yeah, what to improve. Okay. I think I'll, I'll raise my cool. <clears throat> Yeah, let me do that. I'll raise my. You can cool. drag that improvement onto your character sheet, and it will track it for you. Right, there's a place for your improvements. Oh, really? And that way, okay. you can keep track of your improvements so that you know what you've got. Yeah. So you've got an improvements and an advanced improvements on your character sheet. So as you drag those improvements from your playbook onto your character sheet, it should put those there. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, that way you can keep track of every time you improve, you drag it over. So you have an improvement for just adding to your cool or whatever, right? And you also have other improvements that give you extra moves or that sort of thing. So when you drag them onto your character sheet, that should keep track of that for you or help you keep track, I think. Yeah, I think okay. it, it will like move the macro yeah. over, but it won't put it in the improvements or advanced improvements box for yeah. you. Oh, okay. Well, if it doesn't, then you can um, certainly just edit and type it in, what, yeah. whatever you did. So you just keep track of what improvements yeah. you've got. Yeah, I just wrote it down. Cool plus one. Nice. Unfortunately, with Flake, I can't increase increase toughness, but um, which is what I want, but uh, yeah, cool is, is good. <laughs> what? Well, good job, guys. 
tag yes. do you think that should take for the haven? What do, what do you have for yours? Um, for the haven, I've... Uh, I've got the, the lore library and the armory. And the protection spells. Okay. My haven is safe for monsters like you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't enter. Uh, so I'm thinking I might get the mystical library and the oubliette. Because that plus one to use magic when I research it kind of thing. And the oubliette, in case we ever find a monster we have to capture. We can keep it yeah, in my basement. <laughs> All right. Will it work on you? Technically, yeah. All right. But I, I don't know if you guys know about it yet. I'm imagining it possibly being, like, the, the location <clears throat> where I went, I had myself put into stasis. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. Nice. All right. <coughs> All right, guys. Good yep, job. My bedtime. Hope you had a good time. Yeah. Thanks yep, for playing. Thank nice. you so much. All right, we will go Thanks. ahead and say this goodbye to our streaming audience. I it looks like we ran into an audio issue, and so there may be no voice audio for part of our recording tonight. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I caught on to. It. I'm like, I don't think it's the meters aren't moving or talking. So it was working, and yeah. then it stopped and got it working <laughs> hopefully it won't be too bad see you next all right week. everybody thanks we'll see you guys next week bye-bye now see you next week bye-bye see you